Hey, it's Elizabeth off grid. And last night I got the knock. Only took seven nights. I was all ready to today record a video that was like, oh, I've gotten things figured out. I'm doing so great. And don't be wrong. I am doing good and have a lot of things figured out, but I was not expecting to get a knock last night, considering that I was sleeping in a place that I had slept the night before that had no foot traffic and no, I mean, it was just, it seemed and not in front of a house and it just seemed like no one would care. Uh, they didn't care the night before that. The cop wasn't actually knocking on my window to get me to move. I wasn't, I was totally parked in a place that was a hundred percent legal for me to park. But apparently after I had gotten in and actually I was kind of half asleep, someone parked right behind me in a truck, maybe multiple people. And they were walking around the, there was like a storage place and they were walking around it. It's not open. So someone called the cops on, on a suspicious car and they thought that maybe I was with them. So, so they knocked on my window and I talked to them and they actually ran my ID and everything. And as a middle-aged white person, I obviously have a huge amount of privilege in these situations. Well, and I'm a lawyer, so I understand what rights I have and, and all that kind of stuff. It, and so that really helps, you know, do, navigating sleeping in your car when you're not a middle-aged white woman who's incredibly not threatening, you know, I think would be a bigger issue. The people who were the alleged suspicious people were spoke Spanish, did not speak English, or at least did not act like they spoke English. So I did not seem like I was probably with them, statistically speaking. So I think that also helped. The thing is though, the cops eventually left. They were out there talking to this guy in Spanish, and then the cops were talking to each other in English for a long time. And then by the time they left, I didn't want to stay there because they, they didn't take the guy because they had they didn't really have any legal reason to arrest him. And so, except for like very, very basic trespassing, but it, you know, it's not really the kind of thing you normally arrest someone for. So they were talking to each other. They were going to like warn the Campbell police about this guy and blah, blah, blah. And apparently they, I don't know if they had probable cause to look in his car, but they were looking at his car. Maybe he gave them permission and they found a pair of panties in there. Like whose panties are these? I'm like, okay, you know what? I want nothing to do with this situation. And so as soon as the cops left, I couldn't leave while the cops were there because they block in the cars, you know, they had, they send multiple police cars to look into something like this because it's a town that doesn't have a lot of crime. So for someone just calling about a suspicious car, they sent all the cops. And so once the police left, I took down my window coverings and left and it took me a while. I actually went back to Planet Fitness and went to the bathroom. I needed to like kind of reset going to bed. And then I ended up sleeping in a parking lot for the first time. And the parking lot was a place that it was actually on o Overlander, I Overlander. And so I already knew about it. A lot of people sleep there and I've actually seen, I've gone there really early in the morning to the to this place and to go to the store. And I've seen people who were probably sleeping there. So nobody seems to care. I don't plan to go there all the time, but it is kind of, maybe that will be my backup place, you know, if the places I actually am at don't work out. So, so that was interesting. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that's going to be on my to-do list for today is to look for more places to sleep. I'm also going to get my get gas and wash my car. I think having a clean car will also help. I, I remember rethinking about, you know, putting up window coverings because on one hand, I don't want people looking in my car. On the other hand, it makes you look like you're sleeping in your car. You know, it's that style. So I still am thinking about what I'm going to do there, especially when I'm in town. Yeah, I don't know. Now, if a cop comes up there, they'll know you're sleeping in your car the way, because if there's no window coverings, they'll shine a light in your car. And if there is window coverings, they're going to knock on the door to, and they'll still shine a light and try to look and see what's going on. So it's not going to help you with them, but the idea is more help from random people. Overall, besides that, yesterday was a fairly good day. I got work done. I edited video for this channel and put it up. I downloaded video from my other channel, um, got through my emails, made food outside during the day at a park. I mean, it was overall a good day. Now, one of the other things I discovered this morning is that some of my food in my cooler got waterlogged. I honestly don't know how to prevent that from happening completely. I don't think you can. I think you just try to not have it happen. Um, yeah, I mean, you have to pick which, what your poison is. Is it, do you want to deal with ice and, and waterlogged food? Or do you want to deal with a fridge that can break, where the electrical motor stuff can break, and you have to keep recharging the battery all the time? 
yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the right solution. Okay, here we are at one week, day seven, and it is nine something in the morning. I have been already very productive, which is one nice thing about waking up at 4.45 a.m. and, you know, taking a shower. And like, one of the, the benefits of living in a vehicle is that you're already up and already out. There's no like getting ready to leave. You are left. You are in the process of leaving at all times. So I kind of, get things done faster in this certain kind of way because I don't have to get ready to go because going is already in process. I just get up, go to the gym, take a shower. I didn't work out today. I'm still, like that hike really made me sore. It was a wonderful hike, but it really made me sore. So I, giving my legs a day off. So then I went ahead and just, I made breakfast, discovered that some of my food was now waterlogged. It, it, this whole dealing with the ice chest, and ice and water is a whole thing. Am I gonna be so frustrated with it that I don't wanna, that I wanna switch over to the problems of a fridge with draining a battery every day? I don't know. Right now, no. Right now, I'm just gonna complain about the ice stuff and the water. Not really complain, actually. It's actually more that I just need to accept that's how it is. I shouldn't buy a whole lot of food. Number one, I can't fit it in my cooler anyway, but I shouldn't buy a whole lot of food because it might all go bad. So I have, to, if, if the, the reason that I had to buy ice yesterday and today is because I had my car parked in a certain parking lot where there was no shade, like zero shade. And I put up my all my window coverings, but it got really hot in my car. Um, I need to be able to park in the shade. I need to be able to park in the shade. Unless I'm going to go on for five minutes. But if I'm going to be in somewhere for, you know, an hour and a half, two hours or longer, I got to be in the shade. So that's one thing I learned yesterday. So today I bought food and ice. We kind of did my whole ice chest thing. I got stuff out of storage. I had a whole list of things that I wanted to get out of storage. I needed to refill all my prescriptions. I keep my prescriptions in my storage because it's climate controlled and my car isn't really. Um, and so it's better for the meds. I needed to get my sh little sharps. I, ha I need to have a sharps container in here and I have these, these little tiny sharps containers. And for some reason they weren't in here. I need to get a notebook. I need to get some books to read. I needed to get my laundry detergent because I'm going to do laundry this weekend, tomorrow probably. And I was actually going to get some other things that actually aren't there. They must be in the other storage room. Other things I've done, I got my car washed. I went, well, I got gas and I actually went to the little car wash at the gas station. I'm actually thinking about signing up for like a monthly thing at, where you can get unlimited car washes because if you, if you, if you get, more than one car wash a month, you're ahead. And I'm thinking that may be a really good idea because having a clean car, like getting my car washed once a week, I think would actually be helpful for me looking less sketchy. I got my oil changed. So there's a whole nother thing. Uh, I was overdue, not by miles, but by time. And I think I need to actually start be getting my oil changed like you're supposed to every three months or 3,000 miles and actually do it because this is an old car and it's also my house and I need to keep on top of things. I also need to get my tires uh, rotated and all that, but I'm not doing that today. And I also look for parking, for more parking spots. Um, I found some spots that I think are potentially good. Um, the question is, will there actually be room at those places? If they're good, will there be room there? Will someone call the cops on me? Will someone call the cop? Like, what happened last night wasn't that someone called the cops on me. They called the cops on somebody else. So that's the thing is, is that I don't think anyone would have called the cops on me. They called the cops on the other guy because they got out of the car and was like loitering, you know, and walking around the storage place that they didn't have a storage thing at, you know, so that's one of the issues is that I can get roped into someone else's troubles, which can always happen, but it's especially true if you're parking where other people park. So there's that thing is on one hand, it's good to park where other people are parking. And on the other hand, that creates its own problem. That's one of the reasons I don't want to go to that parking lot that I parked at that was on iOverlander because all the time. It's good to have it on my list, but a whole bunch of people park there, you know, and there could be troubles and then I get somehow roped into it. I don't know. We'll see. So the only other thing on my list for today is to do a work session where I'm going to go to the library in a little bit. It's the reason I'm parked right here is because I'm going to make myself a sandwich. Um, kind of reset things in my car a tiny bit. I'm not worrying about doing the whole car cleanup right now because 
I'll do that later today after I'm done with the library. I'll do that later when I go to the park. I was thinking about not going to the park today, but I think what instead what I'm gonna do is just go to the park for a small bit. And that will be when I redo it, you know, click, rearrange everything in my car and take out trash and all those kinds of things. It's a very good place to take out the trash. And I will also cook my hot lunch. So that's what I'm thinking. When I went grocery shopping, I actually bought different things. So I still bought bread and lunch meat and lettuce. I mean, that's gonna be my lunch and that's gonna be my second breakfast is gonna be a sandwich and that my dinner will be a salad. For my afternoon, I'm um, lunchtime, I'm planning to do the same thing as in the last two days, which is a veggie stir fry. I bought some frozen veggies for that. That worked out really well, even though they defrosted for day two. I think that's fine. It's like, I, it's a, it has four servings. I eat two servings on day one, two servings on day two. And I get so many vegetables. It makes me feel so like good in my body. It's a very, very good thing. And that I'm gonna use my eggs for that. That will be the protein. So an egg in that stir fried rice. I got some more rice, shelf stable rice, that I'm going to um, try out just with different flavorings in them and I'll get different kinds of veg frozen vegetables. I really like this idea of getting the frozen vegetables because then you get variety of many different kinds of vegetables, which is, as, and also I don't have to cut them up. They're just done. It makes it super easy for me. Frozen vegetables, they say actually have very good nutritional quality because they get frozen right after they're picked, sometimes like right next door. So there's that. For breakfast though, I'm gonna try something different and it's to have a cold breakfast. So cereal does not work for me because it's a way too many carbs versus protein ratio. The ratio is off. And I'm a little bit more sensitive. I have diabetes type two, by the way, if you don't know this, I'm not just dieting on something. I'm, this is, this is a diabetes thing. I can, I'm, according to my doctor, I'm to have 30 to 45 grams of carbs per meal. And that works for most of my meals to have like 45 grams per carbs per meal, but for breakfast, it needs to be more like 30. And cereal, if you only eat 30 grams of carbs for cereal, and it's your home with some milk or whatever, that ain't enough calories, and you're gonna be hungry in 30 minutes. Well, maybe you won't be, I will be. I need more, I need more fat, I need more protein. So what I was thinking about doing is something super simple, which is just hard boiled eggs, with salt and pepper, you know. Um, I have now mayonnaise and mustard, so I can even make deviled eggs, like as I go, you know. I don't have all my spices, but I, and I do have hot sauce too, so I can make a nice little deviled egg thing, So, but it wouldn't require cooking. And then I got some granola bars, and that would be my carb to go with them, and they're chocolate-covered granola bars, so they'd be like really nice and fun. It means I have to take a lactate pill because they have dairy in them. Then. I'll still make hot coffee. And the idea is that I'll have hot coffee will be that I'll get the hot meal part of it from the hot coffee. So that's my idea. You know, I've tried those instant oatmeals and I think I'm just really picky about oatmeal because I like those oatmeals in a cup. I've done that with going camping and I found them incredibly unsatisfying and it really just isn't enough food for me because the amount of carbs I can only eat is doesn't create enough calories. You need a lot of times those oatmeal things are like all low, fat. I'm like, no, I want all the fats. Now, one thing I could do is go make one of those oatmeal things and add milk, like whole milk or something, but I have to heat that up and then that's hot meal. So like it just feeds the entire purpose. So of this simplification of food. So we'll see how that goes. I'm going to try that. I have, you know, six hard boiled eggs. We'll see how, if can I eat two hard boiled eggs at once? Like, will I enjoy that? I don't know. Will that be enough food? You know, but making breakfast, I found to be, part of it was because of all of it got, most of my breakfast stuff got messed up in the cooler, but part of the problem is I just only have so much energy in any particular day. And I think cooking one hot meal and having it be in the afternoon for my lunch, I think is better. Um, Cause I feel less, like I, I'm not gonna do it inside the car. I actually don't like cooking in the car. I'm eventually gonna need to do it like when it's pouring down rain or whatever. But my thought is cooking inside the car needs to be the exception and not the rule. Heating up coffee in the car is not that big of a deal. And I think, and I could actually do it sitting here because that's another thing. Cooking back there, I dislike greatly. So if I can get the stuff out, put it right here, and then I can, I can just heat up coffee here and have it be right here and then have my cold stuff, I think that would be much better. I really 
yeah, I don't like cooking sitting back there because I'm hunched over and it's very awkward. Here, I don't have to hunch. I do like lounging back there, but not when I have to do stuff. And that's something that surprised me. I thought I would like, I still kind of don't like cooking on my bed. I don't know, it feels very precarious and food spilling makes me nervous, which I'm still gonna have to use this part of the bed, but anyway. It is interesting how I have a different perspective on capitalism and society and all this stuff. Not, not a wildly different perspective, but it's really, it's kind of radicalized my views on homeless population. I already had a somewhat radical view anyway, and now it's even more. So, um, or maybe it's hardened my radicalization. Because the thing is, I don't really consider myself homeless because I literally own a house that just happens to rent to someone else and because I feel like this is my home and I'm doing this as a choice. I'm gonna, going to be eventually, once I get my act together, um, traveling full time. And so like, this isn't me being, this isn't like something that was forced on me. So I have a very different perspective of it. However, other people like the cops, like random people, you would view me as homeless and view me as this, you know, whatever they think of as homeless in their head, I get put into that category, which really does bother me a little bit. Why does it bother me? That's my own like thing to, you know, break down. Why does it bother me? I mean, part of the reason is real risk things and being subject to, you know, as a middle-aged white woman, cops have never come up to my door, knocked on my door and asked for my ID. But when I lived in, they never did that when I lived in a house or an apartment, but living in a car, night seven, you know, and thank goodness I have all the privileges I do because that's all that happened. But yeah, it is interesting losing the privilege of a person who lives in a house apartment, you know, someone who's housed. Yeah, it's, it is an interesting problem. So the rest of the today, it's still really early. I'm gonna go to the library. I'm gonna have a sandwich, go to the library, probably go to the park and clean up all this stuff. And then I think I, I don't know if I'll hang out at the park the rest of the day or, or go somebody else or do something else. I don't know. I'm starting to get to the point of like, I don't, I don't know if I'll go to the same park to do all that stuff. I might go somewhere else. I haven't decided. Like, do I wanna go there every freaking day? while I, before I left, leave. And I'm also rethinking of when do I leave? So my, my original plan was to leave immediately. That was not gonna happen. Then my plan was not leave, it was to leave in September and spend July, August, and half of September cleaning up my other storage room. But I don't know. It's, it is a challenge to live in a city like this. There's some things that are good about it, like the fact that you have a Planet Fitness to go to, um, and they, I went there three times yesterday. Nobody cares, you know, no one cares. Um, one time I literally just came in there and went to the bathroom. But, and also my storage room is here and also I know the area mostly. It's just such a big sprawling area though I don't know everywhere. On the other hand, you're in a city, you're in a suburbia. People call the cops on people. There's people, people don't really mind their own business. Like suburbia I think is in a lot of ways the worst because suburbia, people don't mind their own business. They really keep in tabs on everybody. I, I don't have an opinion about how a small town would be. Like, oh my gosh, in suburbia, it's people calling the cops for all kinds of different things. I, don't, I honestly don't even know who could have called the cops on those people yesterday, last night, because there was, everything was closed there. I, I honestly don't even know. Someone drove by? I, I have no idea. And, they, and the other people came in after me, so how would I have known? I was like already asleep or almost asleep. One of the things that sucks about putting up window coverings is I can't leave like like this. I have to take down the window coverings to legally be able to drive. It doesn't take me that long, but I have to do it. Also, climbing from here back there and back there and for here is freaking ridiculous and awkward. I eventually will film that for y'all because you will just think it's hilarious how terrible it is. All right, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and make myself a sandwich and get on my, my day. Okay, so here's the plan. Right now, I'm. My next project is my other storage, my five by five storage. And in that storage, I need to put shelves and reorganize them. For this storage, what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is divide it into three sections. This section, this section, going all the way back, and then this section. Because back there, they're kind of divided that way. So here, I'm gonna just start going through this and sorting everything and go all the way back. 
And you can see back there, it's actually a lot of space. There's actually not a huge amount of stuff in the sense of stacked up high because there's some furniture there. So I should be able to get through all this stuff. Then I can move the furniture all the way back and then I'll have this space here. And then same kind of thing, start going through all that. A lot of this stuff in the front needs to stay in the front anyway because I'm using it. But some of these things like this is an iMac that can literally just be taken to recycling. Like go gone, you know, like, so a lot of this stuff can be gone pretty easily. The f big pieces of furniture, like there's a bed back there, a uh, day bed that I love, but I'm never going to use. So that's if I'm, I'm going to have people haul off when we get to that point. So it's doable. Hey, it's Elizabeth off grid. It is the morning after night nine, I think, of me living in my car full time. And yeah, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. I have some more videos that I'm going to record that are going to be separate about specific topics. But over this last week, it's been a big adjustment. I mean, obviously it's an adjustment in living in a car. But what I mean is, is that there's a lot of things that I kind of thought I would set up in certain ways that I've had to completely change. A lot of things that I thought I would want to do and I don't want to do. So, for example, I just got breakfast at McDonald's because while I do like making my own coffee and making my own breakfast... <clears throat> 6.30 in the morning is a difficult place to time is a difficult time to do that unless I do it in my car. And I actually really don't like cooking in my car. I can do it in a pinch. Like I'm glad that I have it set up so I can cook in my car. So if it was pouring down rain or terrible other kind of terrible weather outside, or let's say it was bad pollution, actually bad pollution would get in the car. So I'd probably just leave, but then I can cook in the car. That is very good and important. Or if I'm in a remote area and you know it's raining outside but it's really awkward because I can't fully sit up with the clearance above my head when I'm in the bed it it's great when I, I can I'm so glad this bed for sleeping obviously and for napping and for just kind of recline like I can sit back there put up pillows and put my feet up which is very important to be for me to be able to do when I want to but it is not a good place to like kind of do stuff most of the time I'm in the car, I actually sit here in the driver's seat. I didn't really think that I was going to be doing that, but I'd much rather sit here to work, to make a sandwich, to read a book, which is what I was just doing. I'm reading The Sixth Extinction, which is a book that I've owned for a really long time and started and never really get finished. Not because I didn't want to, but because, you know, life. I've started now getting my books back out and starting to read books. So I'm really happy about that. I can read all these books that I never finished. I have an entire box of books to read. I have entire books of just non-fiction books to read. Yeah, so I thought I thought I would want to spend more time in my bed, which I kind of have set up as a chaise lounge during the day, but I don't. I, and I've been kind of redoing the stuff that I have in the car, taking more and more and more stuff and putting it out and putting it in my storage and changing around what goes where inside the car. And I'm still working on that because while I love these drawers here, I don't use them actually very often. Um, and it's hard to get into the bottom ones because the bottom ones have stuff in front of them. Now I love my little organizing things here, which I don't know if you can really see very well. I love my little organizing things, but the, the drawers aren't being used very well. And I haven't figured out if I actually, maybe I don't even want the drawers in here. Maybe I'm gonna put them in my storage and they'll be really good for me to access things in my storage. Once I actually put in my shelves in my storage, which are sitting at some in somebody else's garage, waiting for me to get them so I can build them at the storage place and put stuff in them. I'm thinking I'll do that on Monday, not Tuesday, but m maybe Monday will be a good day for that. Not today, because storage place is only open from 10 to four, so it's not a convenient day for that. Anyway, I don't like to go to the storage place and spend a lot of time there on the weekend because other people are, you know, I like to go there on a weekday with as few people, especially if I'm going to be redoing everything in the storage room. So I'm rethinking the drawers as nice as they are. I'm also rethinking food overall. So I have, I, I thought I was going to do a cooler. I'm going to do a video about all cooking. I was probably do multiple videos about that, but if I didn't have a fridge originally, First, I was going to have a cooler, and then I was going to have a fridge, and then I was going to have a cooler. So I ended up with a cooler. I have to put ice in this every day and a half. I mean, it's way more than I thought. I thought I'd be able to get at least two to full days. Part of it's because it's hot outside. But I have it done correctly. I have it. It's like more than two-thirds full of ice. I mean, I'm doing all the right things, but it's just, it's warm. It's ice chests are inefficient, right? 
Now, I don't have one of these fancy ones. I just have a cheap igloo one, but I don't really know if it makes sense to spend a whole bunch of money on a big giant cooler. So I'm actually rethinking food and I'm thinking about more going to having no refrigeration at all and just having things that are completely shelf stable um, and, and including shelf stable versions like my mayo packet and then having things that do better with refrigeration if you're going to store them longer but if you're going to eat them a short amount of time you're fine like lettuce. I can keep lettuce for two. I, I buy a bag of lettuce. I buy a bag of lettuce that's already been washed because heck I'm not washing lettuce in here. Okay. And I eat that in two days. That's two salads, two big dinner salads. So it doesn't need refrigeration for two days, you know? And then, and so this other stuff in the cooler are things like certain kinds of salad dressing. Now I will definitely miss, you know, ranch and Caesar and all those things. However, I can easily make vinegar and oil salad dressing, like a nice balsamic vinegar from scratch. It does not need refrigeration. I, there also are um, salad dressing packets that you can buy and ranch comes in like cups. So I think I can figure out shelf staple versions when I want something besides vinegar and oil. The one thing that I wouldn't be able to do is leftovers. You know, I have to make food and eat it all there at once, unless it's something like bread or something. Then, and then the third thing that I could still do is I could still go buy food and then cook it right then. So I could go to the grocery store and buy a quarter pound of ground beef at the counter and then go to the park and cook that up. You know, it works better for things like ground meats because you can buy relatively small amounts. I could also buy, and I would have to buy it at the counter so I could get a relatively small amount. So yeah, I, I think in this car, I have to compromise and do things that make sense in this limited amount of space. I may sometimes still have a cooler. I may eventually hook up my refrigerator that is in my storage. I'm actually thinking right now the best thing for me to do is simplify as much as possible. Eat the food that's in my um, ice chest and not buy anything else that goes in my ice chest. And then just eat shelf stable things and things that can, shelf stable things, things that can be shelf stable for a couple of days. And then, and then I did get a, and then the third thing is buy something and cook it right then. The, the I do, for the shelf stable stuff that for a couple of days, I did buy a soft side kind of hard, soft, um, small cooler that is very squared off. It's, I actually really like it so far. <clears throat> it has like kind of a shelfy thing that comes out and that's what I'm putting in. I, I'm keeping stuff like my soy sauce, my mustard, the lettuce, other veggies, you know, things that I do think I'll still buy eggs, not hard boiled eggs because those need to go in the cooler. But I think if I buy just six eggs at a time, I'll eat those within a couple days and I think it'll be fine. And I just will cook them all the way. I won't make um, eggs over easy. If I want eggs over easy, I'll go out to a restaurant. So that's where we are after, oh, nine days of living in my car. It is one thing that's interesting is I've realized that there's two ways to describe what I'm doing. One is I am an unhoused person living in my car. And the other is that I am traveling. I've converted my car into a camper and I'm traveling full time. They get very different reactions as you might imagine. It, it is. Elizabeth off grid and I just want to talk a little bit about the things that I'm planning to change in here because while there's stuff I like about what, how I have things set up it needs to be changed because it just doesn't work for how I actually live in here now there's some things that work really well so I have my bed obviously I have this this basket is actually very helpful because I can like put all my other things inside of it right oh the trash came out that's sad okay um and so it's very helpful why I can just take, you know, my purse and my trash and like all the random things that are in the car and just put them in this basket. And then I move this basket to the, the driver's side. I can move it to wherever. Um, I don't put this on the ground. But anyway, and it's, and it's kind of squishable. Love this basket. That's foam that I got for the upholstering that I don't like. And I think I'm going to try to return. I don't know if I can return it, but I'm going to get a different one. Because it's like, I, I got one that was cheap and it's cheap. Let's just say. So this back here doesn't really work. Now, I want to show you, like this, these drawers are great. I'm going to keep this thing, but I think it might go in my storage. Because the bottom drawer I can't even get to, obviously. I have to move these things out of the way. That is not realistic to move things out of the way. Love this basket with all these things. And then I have this thing in here so that way this stuff doesn't fall down. This is great. This, having this to put in my notebooks and my books, totally great. You can see my glasses or glass case are in here. That's where I stuff it when I'm getting ready for bed. So I know or I can always find my glasses. I'm actually planning to eat the food in the cooler and then not have a cooler for a while. So, 
And then this is, this is my current setup for the CPAP and the battery. The battery actually goes up out of the way because otherwise then it doesn't have enough ventilation. And, but the CPAP stays on here next to me, generally speaking. Under here that you can't really see, there's a really nice rug that you can kind of just barely see down there. And what I'm planning to do is have just a couple, have my little soft side cooler be here during the day. And then at night, switch that out to put back all the food stuff to go into the trunk and then have this be there. And because this then during the day goes into the... Here, what I'm going to do is have bins that is going to be one bin for making coffee, one bin for making hot food using electricity in the car, one bin that's for like making just any kind of food that's, you know, something that I would just assemble, like, like a sandwich or whatever. This drawer here has got all kinds of like, this is kind of almost a junk drawer, I would say. And most of this, some of this stuff doesn't even need to be in the car. Some of it does not need to be inside here. Cause I can't access this from the driver's seat. One of the things that I realized is I actually spent a lot of time in my driver's seat cause it's a chair, you know, it's comfortable. And so I want things that I could, so I could take a bin that could be like my office, pick, pick that bin and move it over here. And I can take these drawers out, but I mean, I, I'd have to move this to take the drawer. That's stuff. But able to just lift a drawer, I mean, lift, a, lift a container and put it over here, I think would work much better. So that's kind of my idea there. Otherwise, a lot of this stuff works. It's just needs to be reconfigured. Hey, it is Elizabeth off grid. Today is day 10 of living in my car. Made huge progress today. I got built the shelves for my five by five storage and redid everything in my storage. It's not really organized perfectly. Yeah, I still wanna spend more time on that. There's still some things I need to go through, stuff I need to get rid of, etc. But everything is actually on a shelf instead of just piled and kind of thrown in. So much more usable. I found a bunch of my electronics, this bag that had a bunch of electric stuff in it. And so that was really good. And I put together all my clothes. I'm going to go through all my clothes. I have a little bit of clothes in my 10 by 10 storage in San Jose. Took my old shelves, put them in my 10 by 10 storage. They're not built yet, but they're there. So I can use that for when I'm going through that storage. And I've gotten a lot of clarity on my build and kind of arrangement in here. So one of the things I'm going to do is, and I'm actually going to do it this week, is experiment with not having any refrigerated anything. No refrigerator, no cooler, no ice, none of that. So this week, this coming weekend, Friday through Sunday, we have another excessive heat warning, whatever it's called. So it's gonna be in, you know, in the high 90s during the day and not getting to be that cool at night. It'll probably get down eventually to like 68, 70 degrees, but it won't be that when I go to bed. So I'm, when, it, when it's really hot like that, I do not wanna cook. I don't wanna have to buy ice every 12 hours. Um, I just, want to have the most simple setup possible. So what I'm gonna do is experiment with not having any ref any refrigeration. So that means that either I'll eat food that's shelf stable, food that is technically, they would want you to refrigerate, but if you eat it the same day or the next day, it's fine. And then food where I literally just go buy it and then cook it or eat, make, eat it. So if I want some ground beef to make tacos, I go buy a quarter pound of ground beef and then I go make tacos. I'm not gonna do that when it's super hot though. Or if I want lunch meat, I go buy you know, a, a very small amount of lunch meat at the lunch meat counter and go make a sandwich. I don't need large amounts of anything. So I'm gonna try that out and see. I'm gonna eat some of the rest of the stuff that's in the cooler in the next day or two. But then after that, I'm not gonna buy anything else. And I'm kind of done with having a cooler for a while. I think having a cooler may make a lot of sense when it's not hot because the ice will keep a lot longer. But when it's super hot, kind of almost ironically, <laughs> Having a cooler is just way more trouble than it's worth, I think. And I think I could do a perfectly fine job just eating shelf staple food. It will cost more. Like canned chicken or packet chicken costs more than buying chicken or even lunch meat for that matter. But I don't have to buy ice. So I got to factor in that $5 a day or every day and a half, not every day of ice. That's an extra five bucks I could spend on those things that would be refrigerated. You know what I mean? Like it's, I'm thinking I would be not only ahead in money or a break even in money, but also I'll be ahead in like complexity of life. Then this space behind me, I'm going to change around. So it won't have a cooler there. I will have my real, really small cooler bag that I'll keep things in like lettuce and things that are technically perishable. But if I eat it within two days, it's not a problem. And I'll also keep in there things like, um, like things like soy sauce and mustard where technically they want to be refrigerated, but you're fine if you eat it fast enough. I do need to buy some 
balsamic vinegar so I can make vinegar and oil salad dressing and like put together the right spices out of the my um, spice stuff so I can make some vinegar and oil some nice you know balsamic vinegar salad dressing for dinner when it's really hot I'm probably not gonna cook anything hot at all but when it is medium like it is today then I generally would and right now I have to get things out of three different places like multiple doors and you know lids like the trunk trunk I guess the trunk have a lid I don't know so anyway that's where we are day 10. I've also been able to edit video and do work and I, I feel much more normal. Like I'm able to kind of start getting things done. Now tomorrow is gonna to be a work day for my law firm. I have a client call and then I also have a bunch of legal work to do. So I think tomorrow I'm gonna to spend time doing that. And then between now and the weekend, what I'm gonna to wanna to do is transition all this stuff. Um, so it is transitioned from to not having a cooler or any refrigeration anymore and the kind of new setup for that. So I'm ready for this weekend. Now this weekend, I'll probably spend a lot of the time working. I'll probably go to a library and just be in the library in the air conditioning working because that's kind of the best way for me to pass the time. The Everybody will be going to the beach so that that's, the beach traffic will be absolutely terrible and I have zero interest in that. Yeah. So. I'm so tired, like, and kind of sore, partially because of the workouts that I've done yesterday and today, but also because of I did so much work, both in the storage room as well as in here. So, as you can see, there's no cooler. I mean, I have that soft side cooler, but there's no ice in that. It, that's just to kind of keep things cooler in the sense of not, not and kind of safe, you know, um, but there's no ice in there. And then my... I have some containers over there for the stuff that was in those drawers. First, I wanted something that was more modular so I can grab the container that I want and use it up here because I actually like sitting in this seat way more than sitting back there. Now, I now maybe I'll like sitting back there now where there's more kind of room, right? But right now, I really like sitting up here. So my thought is since that has no you know headroom back there, that doing something like making coffee will be better done up here. So here's the thing. I wanna be able to sit here and cook. That's what I wanted from the beginning. And I wasn't able to do it then, but now I'm thinking, now that I have things in a modular way, I can grab one or two of the things back there and then cook up here. I have one thing that's for making coffee and one thing that's for making hot food, as in like some kind of stir fry or whatever. One thing that's for making, it's got all my things for assembling meals. I got something, you know, like I just, I've developed done, done all these things, assembling meals or things like sandwiches and salads, things that don't require cooking. I mean, you can cook those things, but these are the kinds that I'm making. So yes, yeah, so simple. Also, all this stuff will be easy to put in the trunk. Cause another big issue is when I'm traveling to bear country, I don't want the food in here. I actually want to be able to put it all in the trunk. So it needs to be easily movable. All the food and all the food cooking things need to go either in the trunk if I'm somewhere where there's no bear thing or in a bear, you know, box. So yeah, I, I think this is gonna be much better. We'll see if it like, and I also think it'll be much better for sleeping because it won't have all this stuff there. Like there's more room to put my nighttime thing. Now I do need to kind of reorganize the trunk tiny bit. For right now, it's fine. And then over the next couple of days, I'll kind of decide how things are gonna be in there. I wanna reorganize all my clothes and I have bags I can use that are in different places. And so my thought is that I can get a smaller duffel and then use that for all my clothes that aren't besides my dirty laundry. And then it won't be all sliding around the back of the car. I'm really close. I'm really close to what, how I want things set up. I'm really also thinking about when I'm traveling for really long trips in the winter or to places where it'd be really hard for me to charge a battery that I, probably would bring some for propane, but if I'm going on a short trip, I could just charge my big battery up and just use electricity. It is so much easier to cook that way. It's faster, it's simpler, less mess, everything. Um, I do wanna get my rice cooker and put it in here. And then I think if I was traveling, I might even have bring my toaster with me, but I have to, I have to test out how much electricity the toaster actually uses. The rice cooker would be really great for when I'm driving. Um, when I'm in town, I'll probably just ha use the rice cooker I, w I wouldn't really use the rice cooker because um, it uses too much, of, it just, uh, it's on for too long. So you use a lot of electricity that way, but it's great for in the car. It can, it'll cook up the rice in you know, whatever, 35, 45 minutes. And then I arrive at my campsite, my rice is done. All I gotta do is a little stir fry. 
it sounds great, right? <sighs> so I feel so much better. Tomorrow is a work day in the sense of like business. So I have a client call. I have client work to do, like law firm client work to do. I have videos that I, to edit, of course. So my plan tomorrow is to work from the park until early afternoon and or mid afternoon and then go to a, go somewhere, go to a library. I also, I need to write this down. I also need to go to the grocery store because since I finished, I finished off my cooler. So I need to buy new food and, and I've been working a lot on what am I going to eat? So for like lunches and dinners, I'm not really worried about that. There's tons of great things. Obviously a salad I can totally still make. I can totally still make tuna fish sandwiches, chicken salad sandwiches with, with shelf stable chicken, a cheese sandwich. I can, if I buy hard cheeses like a sharp cheddar or a Parmesan, that should be fine. I can have peanut butter, of course, um, either on a, as a sandwich or with crackers and nuts and things like that. For my hot lunch meal, you know, I like the stir fry I had, I'd be, I'm probably totally fine with having eggs. Like I'm gonna probably just buy six eggs at a time or something, like to be kind of conservative at least for a while. But we can debate about whether or not eggs need to be refrigerated, but I think you're fine for a couple days. And then lentils would be a good thing to use. Um, be, beans would be good, but they take a lot more time and energy, like actual energy. Peanuts as a protein like in a stir fry, you know? Um, there's also shelf stable stable sausages that I make it too. And then veggies, salad obviously, and then have the protein for the salad be seeds, nuts, cheese, that kind of stuff. And then the big thing though is breakfast. I honestly don't know what to do about breakfast. So I've tried those oatmeals, those like cups, oatmeal, instant oatmeals, and I think it's disgusting. I think the problem is, is like I like oatmeal with some kind of milk or cream or and butter and stuff like that. And so just to have it with hot water is terrible. While there, I could get some kind of milk powder. I could also get shelf stable milk, but it's kind of almost too much for me. You know what I mean? So I, I really don't know what I'm gonna do about breakfast as far as breakfast food, but I could also just not eat, eat breakfast food. Um, I could have bars. I, it really isn't enough protein. I think the big issue is what protein do I have? For breakfast obviously when i'm up for it i can make eggs if i'm going to be having eggs in the car but without refrigeration but i don't know if i'm up for it yet but not tomorrow morning because i'm not buying eggs right now tomorrow morning i'll probably go out we'll see how i am how i feel maybe i'll be like super into it and i'll have you know a sandwich or something i mean that's the thing is you don't actually have to have breakfast food for breakfast i could save you know breakfast food for when i go out or something like that or have something special but I am fairly tired, just from, like literally physically tired. Um, it wasn't hot today. It's like 80 degrees right now, which is the high. That's not hot. That's warm. But it's not hot, but I felt it because I did so much stuff. I had a good night's sleep last night, so it's not that. At least I don't, I think I had a good night's sleep. Hey y'all, it's Elizabeth off grid. It is the 11th day, 11th full day of living in my car. I really feel good about the situation now in the sense of like my setup. So one thing that I did is I changed how this area is. This is like overflow that has nowhere to go yet. So <laughs> that's still working out. But I have no cooler with ice in it anymore. I don't have a fridge. I have a fridge and a cooler, I have two coolers in storage. This is really just to keep things like safe. So I have veggies in there. I have eggs. I have hard cheese. This is, and I also have some condiments like soy sauce and mustard and things like that. And I also have some spices in here. This has got food in it. I have another bin down under there that has shelf stable food. This is some of my overflow shelf stable food that haven't gone in there yet. Like I got some wild skipjack tuna. This doesn't have, this is certified to have very low mercury. So you can eat it more than once a week. And I also got some of this from Trader Joe's, these tikka vegetables. I can't have this with rice, that would be too much carbs for me. I have type two diabetes, um, but I'm thinking I could add maybe some more nuts and add some more veggies to this and really kind of have it be a nice, a, you know, solid meal. Um, and then also I have my bread and stuff in here. I just don't have anywhere to put this stuff yet. As I have kind of too much food still, and as I eat food, it'll take up less space. But I have one bin that's for cooking, hot food. So like when I make stir fries outside or whatever, I have one bin that's for assembling food and for my coffee. So 
And then I have another bin that's just like this that's in my trunk that's like my office supplies. My it, it was really the contents of my desk drawers. So much better organized. I have a little bit more work to do on the trunk because I have some like random things that are floating on the trunk that all need to go into a bag. I actually already have the canvas bag in there. I just literally need to put the stuff in there and I just haven't felt like doing that yet today because I was doing so many other things. I Today was a really good day because I, I worked at the library, got two videos up, one for this channel, one for my other channel. I had a client call. It was so great because I had a client call with someone who actually lived on the road herself and her and her husband for two years, I think it was, um, in an RV. They just came off the road and got in a house. They're planning to go out again. It's just that they realized they didn't want to work and be on the road at the same time. So they came back to work for a while and then go on the road later is kind of the idea. So it was great to talk to, to a client. I, you know, I was, I was actually doing work for her and giving her legal advice. And then we had uh, the rest of the call, we chatted. That was, that was really cool. I did some regular client work. I still have legal clients left over from where I haven't finished everything for them. And some, you know, especially things like trademarks and stuff that take forever. And then my, the rest of my clients are through my Patreon for that other YouTube channel. So, um, but I still do have client calls and you know, give email advice and discord Patreon message advice. One thing that's happening is that there's a heat wave this weekend. I decided to get a motel room for Saturday night, which is like the height of the heat wave. The issue with the heat wave is not how hot it gets during the day. That is easy to deal with. I'm actually say easy. That is possible to deal with by being in the shade, by going to the library, going to a coffee shop, you can avoid it and you can go into air conditioning when you need to. The big problem is the nighttime high, or no, it's the big problem is the nighttime low. How high is the low? Because it's one thing if it's 99 degrees at three o'clock in the afternoon, because you can go into somewhere that's air conditioned. But if it is still 85 degrees at 10 PM, yeah, your life sucks. It is, it is very difficult to cool off, especially in a stealth kind of a way. So um, I decided I'm gonna see what it's like to get a motel just for the peak of it and see how much of a difference does that make? Does it make it better? Does it actually make it worse? Cause then I get used to being in air conditioning too, for too long. I, don't, I actually don't know what we're gonna find out how that is. I'm honestly not sure what my budget is for staying in hotels and things because my finances are all over the place right now because I have, no idea how much money I spend on food and all these things because they're all still under flux. So I'm kind of not worrying about it this month and I'm going to theoretically be hardcore about it next month. I don't know. We'll see. Typically, I found the best way to budget is to actually just track your expenses for a whole month and not change anything and then see how much do you spend on everything. And then you can go back and say, okay, because if, if you if you spend $1,000 on groceries a month, setting yourself a budget for $300 is, that's pretty freaking harsh. And I'm not saying you can't do it, but that's an extreme thing. But if you have a, if you normally spend $400 a month on groceries and you spend a budget for 300, that may be more possible from a percentage basis, you know? And, and you see, I don't know how many times do I get gas a month now that I live in my car. It's a lot more than I did when I lived in an apartment and never went anywhere. Um, well, I didn't never go anywhere, but there were a lot of times I didn't go anywhere. So anyway, it is the evening and I've already used my cephalid device and now I'm just kind of setting stuff up for bed. I will say last night with this new setup, so much better. I didn't feel like closed in by all the stuff because there's so much more room in here. Also, it's nice when I'm parked in random places, you can't, like my car doesn't look piled up, you know? At, at the sight line of the windows, it's clear. Now, it doesn't have any seats in it besides a driver's seat. So there's obviously something going on if you really look, but you won't really look because it doesn't catch your eye as much as someone who has stuff piled up to the ceiling. That helps, I think, with a little bit with being a little more on the stealthy side. Um, but the main reason I'm doing it, it's not about being stealth. It's about having a nice quality of life. Hey, it is Elizabeth Off Grid. I have been living in my car for almost two weeks. Tomorrow it will be two weeks and I am ready to go on a road trip. Like I haven't actually gone anywhere. I've gone, I went hiking like locally, but to a place about an hour away last week, but I haven't actually gone on a trip yet because I've been really getting everything finished in here. It is still not finished and it won't be finished by the time I leave, but yeah, I need to start doing stuff or I, it's like, why am I doing this? So next week I am going to go to a 
National Forest that is in the Sierra Nevadas. I've actually been in that area before, but there's a whole lot of, of it that I haven't seen. And I'm also gonna go to some other parts that I haven't gone at all. I'm planning to stay in um, National Forest land. So either not pay it off for camping, just plan stay in random places, or I'm going to go to National Forest campgrounds that are very low fee, like, you know, $6, $8, like this, this kind of amount of money because they don't really have any services. It just depends on how I feel and how things are and what's it like up there. You know, how hot will it be? Depends on what elevation I'm at. This is the kind of place where if you're at a lower elevation, it's gonna be 100 degrees. But if you go up, big thing for me is sleeping at night. A lot of these places, even if it's really hot during the day, it gets down to like 49 degrees at night. So I'll be fine sleeping. And if it's hot during the day, I find shade, I go to a different elevation. You know, I mean, there's things that you can do. So the big thing, that, not only am I going on this road trip to go on a trip and enjoy myself and go hiking and, and do the things that I love and spend time in nature, but I'm also doing this as a shakeout trip. So, or shake down, shake down trip. Anyway, I'm doing this to test out my configuration. So this is a really good configuration for being in town. I don't think there's anything I want my storage that I don't have in here. There's a couple things I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get a thing to go up here to put my window coverings in, like one of those little net things. And I'm hoping, I think that comes in here tomorrow and I'm hoping that will work. Besides that, I don't think there's anything else I really need. I wanna finish some things in here, but I'm not gonna like buy anything. But I'm not quite sure if I'm road tripping, if what I need to bring with me, because I don't wanna bring all my camping stuff that I used to bring with me when I went car camping and slept in a tent because that was just too much stuff. I need to be able to sleep in here and I don't like having everything, you know, stacked up to the ceiling. So I'm thinking I'm just going to need a couple things for my storage I that I will add just because I'm going to be remote. So I'm thinking I'm going to want my sun shelter. So I have this sun shelter tent thing that will be useful to stake out a claim on a campsite. If I'm in a campground, it will be useful to be able to change clothes in there and just have a place to sit if I want to get away from bugs and also obviously as a shelter from the sun. So it's not very big or voluminous, it's very easy to set up. I also need to get out pants and a hat and a long sleeve shirt so I have a like one more layer of clothing. I might need that at night or in the morning. I might not at all, but I wanna have at least one pair of pants, one long sleeve shirt. I want one more blanket. I want to get reading light. Actually, that's something that I want in the car uh, anytime is to have a reading light. I need to refill my prescriptions and because I keep my prescription meds in, in there because it's actually uh, climate controlled and my car isn't climate controlled all the time, you know? So it's a better idea to keep it in there. And I wanna get my jet boil. So I've been cooking with electricity and actually really like it. And I'm only planning to go on this road trip for, I don't know, four days, like not, not super long. So because of that, I can charge up everything before I leave and then that'll last as far as all my batteries go. And I can cook out there in the field with those batteries. However, I do always wanna have, when I'm in a remote place, I wanna have one other way just in case something happens with my batteries that I can heat water. Cause if I'm, if my batteries don't work, I'm here in town. I just like go to Starbucks, McDonald's, you know, Jack in the box, whatever, and get breakfast, get coffee. That's not a problem. But if I'm really remote place, I might be, you know, 45 minutes or an hour from somewhere where I can get coffee. Um, and so that, that's not cool. So I want to have one other way to boil water. If I have a way to, and that my jet boil, they, though there's a whole bunch of jet boil. I think with the first one who had this completely this configuration to be able to boil water in like three minutes or less. There's a bunch of other companies that have ones that are cheaper, but I got it in the very beginning for backpacking, and I love it so much. It heats up water so fast, and I could also use it to cook things. And so that's the idea of that having that, and that will be my backup for cooking. I'm gonna also buy a gallon of water to have another water jug. I have one gallon in the trunk right now that it's like a plastic jug that I refill at the park. And then so I have one more gallon. So I have two gallons total. I think that'll be enough water because I really only need one of them during the day. And then I can hopefully find places to refill them at, you know, rest stops, picnic areas, stuff like that. I actually don't know. That's going to be one of the things. So I'm not bringing with me the last stuff I'm not going to bring with me, and we're gonna see how that works out. A lot of my other camping things. I'm not bringing myself other ways to cook food. I'm not bringing like a, you know, toilet situation. I mean, I can dig a hole, I can pee outside. Peeing outside is like no big deal for me at all. As long as I, as long as no one sees me. 
right? Um, I actually typically don't use toilet paper. I use wet wipes. And if you use wet wipes, you're not going to throw them out. I mean, you're just going to pack them out. And so um, that's what I would do anyway. They are much easier to actually use in the field, I find, than toilet paper. So, and you're going to throw them in garbage anyway. So what difference does it make? I will need to have, oh, it's another thing I need, as I need to bring a shovel with me. Now, I have two metal collapsible shovels. And I'm going to bring one with me to test. Let's write that down. I have one shovel that's in my camping, that's in my backpacking gear, uh, but it's plasticky. And I just don't depend on, I don't think it's, it doesn't work very well to dig in hard ground. It's fine if it's just like loose dirt, but around here it tends to be a very hard ground. So that is the current status. Today I'm planning to just do client work. I'm going to go and also charge my batteries, my small battery. And then this weekend, today's Thursday. Friday, I'm actually hoping to do my headboard. I think that would be a good project for Friday. Then this weekend, I got a room at a motel so I can avoid the heat wave. And there, I'm planning to edit a ton of video for this channel, a ton of video for my other channel, like edit everything that I have and spend time in air conditioning and recharge all my batteries up to 100% and see what it's like to stay in a motel for two nights and, yeah, and just exist there and see how productive can I be. Cause I'm thinking this might actually be a good model for me is that I pick, you know, a couple nights during a month that where the, it's going to be either too cold or too hot. You know what I mean? And I go to a motel that is safe and has good reviews <laughs> and it doesn't sketchy or a, ho or an inexpensive hotel. And if you go to, um, less big cities, if you're in small towns, sometimes you can, especially off season, you can find a, you know, holiday Inn express that's a hundred dollars a night, but, um, or a Hampton Inn or, or something like that. And, it'll be nice and you'll have hot breakfast. The motel I'm staying at, I don't think as hot breakfast. They might have like, you know, coffee and, and pastries and, and things like that, which I may or may not eat anything of, but we shall see what they have. Anyway, we're going to see how that goes. Then on Monday, I'll get out ready for the trip. Tuesday morning, I have a call at 10 a.m. So I'm thinking I'll do that from the road. I'll start driving after I take a shower um, at Planet Fitness Tuesday morning and then drive to like somewhere along the way, either in East Bay or Sacramento or something where, and then stop before my 10 a.m. call. So again, this is Elizabeth off grid. If you would like to say hi or have any ideas for places for me to go in the future, post that in the comments below. Like, subscribe, support the channel. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.